40 points a game on offense. I like the confidence. In the world full of podcasts, he's the undisputed heavyweight champion of hot takes, an Auburn sports homer, master of the bug, and message board legend. Get your buttons buttoned and your hats flattened because the Top Button Podcast is about to kick off. And you don't want to miss your courtside seat. Now, here's your host, Charlie Five. Yes, sir. Happy Wednesday. Uh, it's your host, Kyle Rush, uh, with the Top Button Podcast. Another episode coming right at you. Hopefully, this gets you over the hump. The game day is creeping in closer. Auburn spoke to uh, the media, spoke to players yesterday, had some very interesting, uh, very interesting tidbits that we're going to go over. Maybe a little bit of depth chart shakeup. We'll have to see what happens, uh, how this plays out the rest of the week. And then we're going to talk about some Peyton. Thorn stats got a great question asked to me last night. We're going to dive into that. But before we get started, we got to give a shout out to our new sponsor, uh, mybookie.ag. Hey, look, if you got to get your account set up for the football season, why not go with mybookie.ag? Use coupon code next round and double your initial deposit. So double it up, get that thing loaded up ready to go, get you on that. You still got time to get on that Auburn over seven and a half wins. I just saw it on their sports book. So definitely check them out. Get your get get ready for the football season with mybookie.ag and double up that initial uh, deposit. So yesterday, Auburn spoke to the players. So you had the coaches, I think, the day prior, and then you spoke to the players a little bit yesterday. Uh, and I think it was uh, – I think it was um, – Brandon Frazier said that the goal from Derek Nix, and it's something they preach every single day, is 40 points per game. So 40 points per game is what their goal is, and that is an incredibly lofty goal, okay? So if you go back in Auburn uh, recent history, uh, 2013 was like 39 and a half points per game. That's the national championship game year. And then you go back all the way to 2010, uh, and they averaged just over uh, 40 points a game. So you're you're talking about some of the historic offenses at Auburn if, uh, at, at least in recent memory, if Auburn can get to that 40 point per game, uh, 40 points per game uh, threshold. Now, I love goals, okay? I love having high goals because, you know, if you're shooting for 40, if you land at 35, you're pretty solid, so, but I it's hard to see. It's hard to see. I guess the the total package of firepower to be able to get there to forty points per game. But hey, you don't have to get there to be. You don't have to get to forty points per game for this offense to shake some things up. For this offense to sort of change the narrative. For this offense to to get Auburn into a situation where you don't have to continually rely on defenses uh, to bail you out. So I mean, if Auburn's just oh, if Auburn just scores thirty-two points a game last year, you win a whole bunch more ball games. So can Auburn get to thirty-two to thirty-five points per game? I think absolutely. I think there's there's plenty of firepower to be able to get uh, to get there to get to that uh, to get to that number. And the the difference in the difference in twenty-six points per game, which is where Auburn was last year. And adding another touchdown on average per game is absolutely massive. It does so many different things. Number one, you're moving the ball more, so you're keeping the defense off the field. Uh, you're giving yourself more possessions to be able to to score more points. Again, your defense is only as good as how long they can stay on the field and how and how, how much energy they can they can withstand <laughs> in, in in a single game and, and not continually being left out to dry. You you can extend dry you're extending drives typically unless you're just explosive and you're scoring in two or three plays. But I think more than likely you're going to be extending drives, increasing time of possession, uh, and all of those things uh, typically yield more wins. They typically yield better results. So I, I don't know uh, if, if I had to guess from a from a offensive standpoint what this offense may look like I think it's going to be somewhere in that 2017 to 2019 range I feel like if you can be in that range but, but maybe not have as much of the highs and lows okay if, if you can be somewhere in, in, in that range that's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 33 ish points per game 
uh, and, and be able to have a pretty strong running game and, and a pretty good passing game, not not just the the elite of the elite passing game, but a, a good enough passing game to be able to uh, at least stretch the field a little bit, push the defenses back a little bit, not have to have everybody crowded the line of scrimmage daring you to throw. I think if they do that, we'll be able to to hurt them a little bit this year. 40 points a game is lofty, but I don't think you have to be there. I don't think you have to be at 40 points a game uh, for this offense to, to function, for this offense to work. I, I would love if, if I could pick a number, if I could pick a number from last year to this year, if we could be 30 in the 35 range, I would be ecstatic. If you could be somewhere around that 35 point range, I think that's going to be something that's going to be. Uh, that would be very, very beneficial for Auburn. It's been a while since Auburn's actually been at that range. So that's actually that even that's a pretty lofty goal. That's adding, uh, you know, nine more points on average per game from season to season. So, but if Auburn can be, you know, again, not going all the way to 40, if Auburn can be in that 34 to 35 point range, they're going to win a lot of football games and you're going to be fired up that you doubled up that bet. Uh, you doubled up that deposit and, and dropped it on that Auburn over uh, seven and a half games. If Auburn o if Auburn averages over thir uh, 35 points a game or around 35 points a game, they're going to blow that seven and a half number out of the water. I think you're looking at easily probably at nine wins if, if Auburn can get to that status. And they feel confident in doing it. They feel confident in getting there. Uh, there's there's they they've got the skill, they've got the big playability. You fit your quarterback. He went on the next round yesterday. Uh, he seems just so much more confident, so much more uh, sure of himself. You know, last year I, I just don't even har hardly remember him speaking to the media prior. I don't. I don't re remember him ever having any type of swag go swagger going into the season. I don't remember a whole lot of anything uh, about him. You know, publicly. But he's doing a lot of different appearances. I, he just seems more and more relaxed and more and more confident and more and more a little bit loose-lipped, like letting some things out there uh, as far as, uh, you know, what to expect from the offense. I mean, I don't know. The confident, confidence in a quarterback is something that's uh, – confidence in a quarterback is something that can be dangerous, okay? If he feels like he can make it happen, if he feels more confident in the play calls, he feels more confident in the ability to change the play calls uh, that's something to look out for. And I think that 35 points per game is very, uh, very attainable. One thing, the only thing that's going to keep them from being able to get there, and, and it seems like something they've been experimenting over the last two weeks, is really uh, figuring out that fifth offensive lineman. You feel so good about four out of the five, okay? depending on where you put Dylan Wade. You feel really good about four out of the five. That right side of the line, there has not been a whisper of changes uh, on the right side. The only whisper, what the only somewhat whisper still had to do with the left side of the line, it, it, and it's finding the right com, com, uh, combination. But it seems like now the from Connor Lou over <laughs> to Xavier Miller is just rock solid. You feel awesome about – that side of the ball. It's the left side that's been sort of experimenting, and it's really not two players. It's really just trying to figure out what to do at left tackle. Do you slide Dylan Wade out, or do you bring in a whole new left tackle? And it seems like, from a lot of different reports, Tyler Johnson took a lot of first-team reps in 11-on-11 11 11 yesterday at left tackle. So Tyler Johnson's the very first uh, – he's the very first – Offensive lineman, really big time offensive lineman that Hugh brought in in his half class. I call, always call it a half class when they move in because when they first take over because they just don't have the time to build the relationships. But in that very very short period of time, he flipped a four star offensive tackle from uh, Texas Tech who came in and had to completely reshape, completely retrain his body, uh, and has become a very very viable option at left tackle. Uh, so much so that. It's looking like if this isn't just another experimental thing like last week, you know, last week they switched up Dylan Wade and Percy Lewis. So they put Dylan Wade at tackle, slid uh, Percy Lewis down to guards. That seemed to me 
like a communication thing. Like maybe when when Connor Lou's making the call, making the call, it's it's not making it so all the way. It's not making its way all the way down to Percy. So maybe that could have caused some issues. So if you slide them a little bit closer, does that make the communication work? Well, it doesn't seem like that rotation worked either. So now they're looking to go back. They're looking and trying out Tyler Johnson. I think Tyler Johnson was was have, like building a crescendo uh, through the whole camp building a crescendo through the whole camp. They started doing these experiments, and when he got put in there, uh, I'm not sure 100%. I'm not sure 100% that he was able to really solidify himself and take over, but it seems like now he's getting closer and closer to be able to take over uh, at left tackle and may end up starting the season. I've been saying for the whole, you know, the whole camp, uh, they're trying stuff out, and – they're probably still going to roll with the initial offensive line, and they still could. They still could do it. Percy Lewis at left tackle, Dylan Wade, but Tyler Johnson getting starting reps on Tuesdays. Okay, which Tuesdays are hard work days. Tuesdays and Wednesday Wednesdays are full pads, banging heads uh, practices. Okay, so for him on Tuesday to get that uh, that start those starting reps and that physical practice for those physical practices. That to me seems like that to me seems like it's getting closer that Tyler Johnson's going to end up taking over at least his first game, at least the first series. You know, Hugh talked about he, it all all that means is who goes out there first. I still think they're probably going to rotate some, but Tyler Johnson, uh Tyler Johnson getting first team reps, that's something that if you can get that solidified. The pros here of Tyler Johnson. Okay, he's a red shirt. Uh, he is a red shirt, uh, I believe. I guess he'd be a red shirt sophomore. No, he'd be a red shirt freshman. Red shirt freshman. So you have the ability to possibly have a. Uh, you have. You could have a. Um, you could have a starting quarterback. I mean, a starting left tackle for multiple years. If, if if he can go in and he can make it happen, you could have a starting left tackle solidified for at least two years, maybe three, uh, depending on how well he does and his draft projections. So it's something to be a, it's something to watch. It's definitely something to get a little bit excited over because, hey, uh, Auburn's typically not had this. If, if the first guy goes out, you're screwed. Okay. If the first guy can't, can't cut it, you're kind of screwed. You don't have the, the depth built in. Uh, now you got Tyler Johnson coming in that – has a lot of promise. Has a lot of you're you're getting a lot of uh, excitement around him. Uh, his backup would be Percy Lewis, who has S SEC experience. And then if that doesn't work, worst case scenario, Dylan Wade slides out to left tackle, and you figure out the guard position. And Dylan Wade was a phenomenal uh, left tackle last season. So that's not really something. Uh, the offensive line is not really something I'm super duper concerned about. Uh, it is a few things they have to get figured out, but man, you feel like you got a really good core of four, uh, at least four guys, and then you got to figure out that la that last piece. And this is a perfect game to do that. So that's something to keep an eye on. And if, if the starting offensive line can perform uh, at, at at the level or a little bit of a higher level than they did last year, uh, you got a really good chance to increase that points per game total and, and get close to that lofty uh, forty point. Uh, goal. Before we hit our last thing, I had a really good question asked to me last night. We got to give a shout out to our boy Ford Stokes with retirement results at pre presented by Active Wealth. Check him out, retirementresults.com forward slash plan. Don't let your money go to Alabama's NIL. Don't let your savings, all the commissions and things like that, don't let that go to Alabama's NIL. You need to have it go to an Auburn guy. You need to check him out, Ford Stokes with Active Wealth Management. He'll give you that free portfolio analysis. Uh, at no cost to you, typically that's a $1,500 value just to make sure if you already have something, make sure it's going in the right directions. Or if you don't have anything, kind of puts you a plan together to get you where you need to be. So Ford Stokes with retirement results presented by Active Well. Tell them where you go, tell them I sent you. Got to ask a great question. What to expect from Peyton Thorne uh, this year? Uh, and, and you had Chris Todd's stats. Uh, from last year. This was Dustin over at the Up Tempo podcast. Chris Todd, somewhere around his first year with Gus, somewhere around 2,600 yards, 22 touchdowns. Is that something that you should expect from Peyton Thorne? And I and I think if, if you're setting a line on both of those, those are incredible lines. I think that is an incredible, 
number to pop to look at that that Peyton can make uh, if Peyton has anywhere around that success 2600 plus yards 22 touchdowns Auburn is going to win a, a lot of football games and the function of Hugh Freeze's offense leads me to believe that that's way more achievable especially the touchdowns part it's not very often that Hugh doesn't have uh, – if he has a quarterback that's healthy all year that he doesn't go over 20 touchdowns. So that 22 touchdowns seems like it's going to be really attainable. You know, getting a lot of one-on-one matchups, especially in the red zone, uh, throwing the ball up, letting guys make plays, that is sort of a function of the offense. If you remember pay, – uh, with Gus's offense, Jarrett Stidham threw for over 3,000 yards but only threw 18 touchdowns because when you get in there, you pound it, you pound it, you pound it, you pound it. You're not able to throw uh, touchdowns. You are not. You just don't have that. Even when you had pretty good receivers that could go up and get it like Seth Williams, you just didn't throw a lot of touchdowns. I think this offense is going to be uh, – the function of this offense is going to lead to a lot – uh, of passing touchdowns. You got speed on the outside. You got threats on the outside. You got Rivaldo in the middle that can eat up the middle. It sort of makes it a little bit stressful for the defense. But 22 touchdowns, which was at that time before Cam came, that at that time that was the single season record, uh, 22 touchdowns. I think Peyton could get really close to that. Uh, and, and based off the way this offense works, I think you could possibly surpass it without having to throw – for 3,000 plus yards, uh, which is something that, you know, we may not quite be there yet. But anywhere in between 2,600 yards and 3,000 yards, uh, or just, hey, I'll take 2,600 yards. If, if you can get to 2,600 yards, anywhere in between the 26 to 3,000 uh, and 20 plus touchdowns, Auburn's going to win a lot of football games. Auburn is going to win a lot of football games. They're going to blow the the doors off of that 7.5 uh, win line by at least a half game, if not two games, uh, or a game and a half. I mean, it, it could be – You, I, I think if if you have those type statistics, you're closing in on that 35 points per game, and I think you're also closing in on nine wins. Uh, you just look at it last year, you, again, you win three or four more games if you're just a little bit above average – or average, if you're just an average <laughs> offense – uh, you're, you're winning a lot of games. So Peyton stats, 2,600 plus yard, 2,600 ish yards, 2,600 to 2,700 yards, and 22 touchdowns. I think that's very doable, and that'd be a big jump for him. I think that will be a big uh, selling point of this offense moving forward. Uh, and I think, I think that's very attainable. I don't see any reason he's already done it. Number one, he's already done it twice. Uh, number one, got, exceeded that. Now he's just got to do it at Auburn, and he's going to have a lot more talent around him. Uh, offense in general, love the talk about the offense in general. It's been a lot of fun to sort of get excited about offensive football again. So we'll see what sh how everything shakes out. You're closing in on game day. You got your you're still experimenting with some offensive line, but you may have that thing figured out. We'll see how today's practice goes and the notes that come from it. Uh, I, I, again, 40 points per game would be awesome. I'm looking – hey, if you just give me 35, I'm happy. Just give me 35, I'm happy. And Peyton, uh, if you can give me 2,600-plus yards and 20-plus touchdowns, uh, I think we're going to win a ton uh, of football games. So, guys, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to check out mybookie.ag. Get that double-up deposit. Sign up. Use coupon code next round. Double up your deposit. Don't forget about that. If you like this show, uh, like it. If you like this video, like it. If you like this channel, subscribe to it. Hit that alert bell. You never know when we're going to go live. We've got something really cool coming up next week that I'm very excited about. Uh, it's going to be sort of an offshoot of the Top Button podcast. Maybe talk a little talk a little basketball. Talk a little basketball on a, on a whole another show. So uh, that's something that we got a lot going on at the barn in general, the barn Auburn YouTube page, and then the barn Auburn.com sign up today for a dollar for your first month. Can't beat it. We're dropping recruiting, recruiting nuggets, roster nuggets, uh, all kind of stuff. We even got some basketball recruiting chatter too. If you want to get in there on that, uh, and it's a lot of fun dollar for your first month, nine 95 after that, just try it out, see what you think. Uh, and then follow me on Twitter, the underscore Charlie underscore five. You know we're going to be here every single day getting after it. Uh, I really appreciate it, guys. Uh, uh, we'll see what happens. See what happens with this offensive line out of practice today, and we'll let you know tomorrow. Uh, it's another episode of the Top Button Podcast. Just stay buttoned. 
for listening and drive home safely.